Solar Reserve has a unique and innovative technology. It's large-scale energy facilities, but we have an integrated storage solution that can collect the sun's energy and provide it round the clock. It allows our projects to operate on solar energy, but like a conventional natural gas, coal, or nuclear facility, which provides on-demand power even after the sun goes down. The Crescent Dune Solar Energy Project is our flagship project. It started construction in Tonopah, Nevada in the fall of 2011. The Crescent Dune Solar Power Plant is a molten salt technology-based 110 megawatt power plant. That's enough to deliver power to approximately 70 to 80,000 homes. It truly is rocket science. It is the first of its kind of its size in the world. The process of storing the solar energy starts with this heliostat field that we're in. We're standing in the middle of what will be 10,300 heliostats, which will concentrate their energy on the top of a 640-foot tower. On top of the tower is what's referred to as a receiver. It's made up of a bunch of tubes which molten salt passes through. The whole molten salt process starts from a cold tank, which the salt is stored in at 550 degrees Fahrenheit and it's pumped up through this 640-foot tower to absorb all the concentrated energy of these heliostats and raise the salt temperature up to 1,050 degrees Fahrenheit. It goes into a hot salt storage tank for future use as far as energy and electricity generation. Essentially, the rest of the power plant is the same as any other power plant. It's basically a steam turbine. The steam is generated from superheaters that exchange the heat from the molten salt into water, make the superheated steam, and deliver that to a steam turbine, which delivers the electricity to the NV Energy Utility Grid. Essentially, we have the bulk of the civil work completed in the power plant, the molten salt storage tanks. They're nearing completion right now. There'll be a lot of pipe work in the near future, as well as a lot of cable installation. We'll complete construction towards the end of this year and complete the plant probably in the second quarter of next year, 2014. The legacy of this plant will be that it will be a game changer. At this point in history, natural gas is very cheap. Will that be that way in 10 years, five years? Who knows? This power plant can do anything that any other power plant can do, only with this power plant, there's no fossil fuel involved. It's strictly the power of the sun. Tonopah. This sleepy little town in the high desert country of the Sierra Nevada is at a crossroads, where the old economy is making way for the new. Tonopah was one of the last frontiers of the Old West. The discovery of silver at the dawn of the 20th century sparked a mining boom before the town lapsed into fading glory. They campaign hard out here, but there's little division about where the future lies. It's in mining the sun. Less than half an hour's drive out of town is a state-of-the-art solar facility known as Crescent Dunes. If it looks space age, that's because it is. Considered by some to be the most advanced power plant in the world. The project's technical director is Brian Painter, an industry veteran who's been running electricity plants for 30 years. It's amazing, it's like a mechanical forest. It is exactly, that's what you're walking through, a mechanical forest. It's made up of steel and, and mirrors and, and all this sort of thing. The huge mirrors on these mechanical trees are known as heliostats. Each heliostat concentrates the sun's energy on the top of the tower there, the, the black section there that you see. What's in the tower? What's in that black section is molten salt. Molten salt is pumped through the top. It's like a big energy absorber. It's, it's absorbing all that sun's energy that's being concentrated on the tower. While we were at Crescent Dunes, the process of pumping 31 million kilograms of salt into the tower was still being completed. When the plant starts running later this year, 10,347 glittering mirrors will beam concentrated light onto the tower, where the molten sodium will act like a giant battery, storing the sun's energy. Crescent Dunes is a remarkable thing to see. This is the first solar thermal power plant in the world to have molten salt storage. So what it does, it takes the energy of the sun 
produces electricity, and then stores that as heat in molten salt storage. And at night, when they need to make use of that power, they can run it from the heat that's being stored in this molten salt storage facility. The thing with them being able to store the energy is that we can shift the time of delivery. We can deliver nighttime, daytime. When a utility might want power, we can deliver anytime. Overcoming one of the perceived problems of solar, that the energy is only available when the sun's shining. This technology could be the backbone of a power grid, delivering baseload power as reliably as coal or gas-fired generators. When it's up and running, it will be providing energy into the night for the neon light capital of the world. That's right. The facility is going to be providing power to Las Vegas. It's hard to think of a, of a city in the world that uses more energy at night than, than Las Vegas. So it's a great validation of the possibilities of, of solar and storage together. The company behind Crescent Dunes wants to bring this remarkable technology to Australia. It's hoping the mining industry will embrace solar power at remote mine sites, which currently rely on polluting and heavily subsidised diesel fuel to generate electricity. It had planned to build large-scale renewable power plants to supply retail electricity, but it's given up on those ambitions because of the drift of policy down under. And that policy change pretty much took the life out of the renewable energy sector as far as large-scale projects for, say, utility applications. Other markets around the world are advancing. Australia is going to get left behind. They made a big deal out of Kevin Smith is the chief executive of Solar Reserve, the company that developed Crescent Dunes. What was the reaction in your sector in the United States when people discovered that a, a man who denies that CO2 is contributing to climate change, was appointed to head the review of the Australian Renewable Energy Target. Well, it's, it's, it's a little bit hard to grasp that kind of that concept. I mean, clearly, you know, that, that appointment was made because, because they want to move back towards conventional fuels, coal and oil. It's pretty clear that the policy in Australia is, is, is now being centered around big coal. Uh, the coal industry clearly has rallied to move policy um, away from renewable energies because they view renewable energy as a threat and back towards conventional coal. 